My name is Sergey Nazarov and we're here uh, from smartcontract.com presenting our, the work we did together with Swift, a working smart contract that was able to retrieve external market data and make payments using the Swift network. We did that together with a large number of institutions, together with uh, Barclays, Society General, BNB Paribas, uh, Fidelity, and Santander. Um, and this initial implementation that we worked on together with them was meant to show that you could have a smart contract send a swift message. Uh, and that means that the smart contract can now make payments to thousands of bank accounts if a system like that was, was fully implemented, which greatly expands the capabilities of what the smart contract can do. I, I think we, our idea is more to provide linkages, so one of the things is we have GPI, cross-border. We would like to find a way that you can, you can have payments that travel on GPI be delivered through a local real-time system. So I think historically we've been in the business of linking these systems with, with banks uh, in the middle. And our idea would be to do the same with uh, GPI, first link them uh, to, uh, to GPI. We are also excited about the, the architecture between the banks with uh, an architecture that allows other providers to provide overlay service uh, on, on top of that. I mean we're going to see challenges and new players coming into uh, the new payments platform? Yeah, and, and existing players. I think uh, they're, they're looking at a number of overlay services in Australia and it's a mixture of new players and banks wanting to offer their services as an overlay. Uh, so it will be a combination of both. There. We're going to need high quality triggers and they're going to high, need high quality payment outputs that end users want to receive. It's these high quality triggers and it's these high quality outputs that, uh, well basically it's what they'll need to become competitive with traditional financial agreements. Without them, they, um, yeah, it's, it's not very clear how a digital financial agreement that can rely on data feeds and make payments to end users in the way that end users want to receive it um, would be replaced by something that can't do those two things, right? We are, we're making, Progress. Uh, I think the idea would also be that third parties can provide services that plug into GPI. So, like fintechs. Like fintechs. Okay, and you like do like the have, banks and all that. You do have a, fin a fintech taking the service up now. We have Ibri, um, and we we. Um, I mean, there's. There's so much out there. There's blockchains, there's robotics, there's uh, AI, APIs. But for you, which is the most significant area? Uh, for me, it is APIs. Um, because I think that, first of all, it's technology that's here and now. Um, and I can just see around us the, the impact it's having. I mean, we could not have done GPI without API technology. Yeah. Obviously, it, it's one of the things that really excites me. I think it's the most fundamental redesign of correspondent banking in years. Really a service that takes the old model makes the payments trackable, transparent, faster, uh, etc. Uh, progress to date has been, I think, beyond our expectations. Uh, just a, a mere two, not even two years after the launch, we are now at 200 banks that have, over 200 banks that have signed up. We have a third of all the payments globally that are on uh, GPI. And they commonly want to do payment outputs in all kinds of currencies and payment formats. And it's these inputs and outputs that our company specializes in getting to the contract, right? When it's bank data, you do want to know who makes the API call and that they're, that they're authorized. I think that's one of the reasons why we're looking at facilitating API calls over our network. That network has all the identification and security layers, and by going over that network, you solve part of that uh, part of that problem. It will be using the internet technology and API technology, but with the the security protocol that we've embedded in our network. The first gating issue is secure middleware, and then the second issue is how do you create an abundance of building blocks of inputs and outputs that people can combine with their core code. And in combining that with their core code, they're now able to build uh, a, a greater amount of applications, massively expands what, is, what, what developers can build. So I think the key trend is that many people are going from initial proof of concepts and initial minimal viable product implementations into something that they want to move towards production. There's three main areas of focus, I should say, are standardization of APIs as an industry. We make open source software and we think we make it so well that it's likely to become a standard. Then it is enabling our own services to be accessible through, uh, through APIs, like the KYC a database and, and GPI, as we're already doing. And then the third one is facilitating API call between banks in the context of open banking over our, uh, over our network, essentially.
API is the, is the breakthrough. Um, there's lots of things, open banking and, and PSD2 APIs are at the, at the heart of that. A lot of what you're now seeing in the whole web 3.0 is based on APIs. Cybos has been quite good. I mean, there's a lot of smart people here. There's a lot of folks uh, we're discussing partnerships with and a number of things are moving forward in a, in, a, in a positive direction. Obviously, working with Swift has been very good and you know we're continuing to go down that path. In our opinion, the thesis would be that if you expand the capabilities of what a smart contract is capable of, then developers will be able to build more interesting contracts, which is really the focus of what, uh, of what we're working on. My name's Harry Newman. I have the pleasure to be head of banking at Swift. What you do is you layer over the current Rails a tracker service, and there, in, out of that, you have an API, a set of APIs that people can use to, to, to access that. And the attraction, of course, is that you now start to have a database that has all the payments data of international payments. And alongside that, you can start to put new platforms that are, um, they might be trade platforms or they might be other platforms, and they can interact with each other with APIs. So these are the things we start to, to, start to explore. The Swift GPI link can work with any DLT provider and with non-DLT based trade platforms. We will demonstrate the conclusions of this proof of concept at Cybos in London in September of this year.